the gamer's experience where I share with you some of my favorite memories from PC gaming from my top kind of like my top 100 list in chronological order not necessarily in best of worst order and uh, today we're going to be talking about silent service Two, actually, that's the focus will be on Silent Service 2 because that's the game I remember playing the most. But we're going to dip our toe into Silent Service 1 just for kicks and giggles. Um, and just a few things first. Um, I'm going to be a little distracted as I'm trying to do some setup, I'm doing some sound checks on here. My videos are kind of fly by see the pants. I don't do a lot of editing. In fact, I don't really do any editing aside from slapping the intro and the outro uh, before I get this uploaded. So if there's some pauses and some clicking and stuff, as I mentioned in the first show, I do this primarily for myself and journaling and, uh, my trip through PC gaming. Uh, and so that's really my focus. So uh, I'm willing to put up with a little... Um, things here and there that aren't exactly professional hopefully you are too to get to the meat and potatoes of what we're doing here which is sharing these games um today i'll be doing talking about silent hunter but first uh the first show that we did if you haven't seen it yet episode number one it was about y barm and you can go back into my youtube channel and you can check that out when i uploaded it I didn't realize that the whole video did not completely uh, make the cut in the editing software that I use. So somebody left a comment, one of my friends left a comment that, hey, Phil, <laughs> you're missing, it kind of cut off, you're missing something there. So I've re-uploaded that episode. And there was a couple things there at the end that I felt were a little important that I want to reiterate at the beginning of this show in case you don't want to go back and watch through the entire show just to get to my, my final few comments. Uh, one of those was along the lines of, hey, if you like what you see here, leave a comment, love to hear from you, shoot me off an email, shoot me off a tweet. A lot of the information that you need to get a hold of me is right down there in the comment section down below, so you can go ahead and do that. Um, if you'd like to see Let's Plays of these games, feel free to shoot me off a comment like full playthroughs, or at least as far as I'm willing to go, let me know. Uh, for the most part, I don't save. I do a, a bit of live streaming for my brother and friends, but for the most part, I don't actually save those live streams and post them permanently to YouTube. I usually delete them after a while. But hey, if, uh, if you'd like to see longer YouTubes and more complete YouTubes, let me know. All of these games, for the most part, that I've searched for have complete Let's Plays out there. Um, it would only be the only purpose of seeing me do it instead of just going and watching one of them is if you just love my banter so much that you just want to um, hear me play the games rather than watch the other people's. And uh, hmm, that's about it. So this is, uh, just to reiterate, for those of you who have not seen the first show, the gamer's experience is a combination of a let's play and a game review. More or less, it's my journey through gaming that I want to share with my friends, family, and myself. <laughs> if I get too old, I want to go back and watch and go, oh yeah, I remember those games. It's a, I can go to my YouTube channel and check that out. And that's mostly what it's for. Um, but if other people get some satisfaction out of watching these videos and going through the memories with me, that is just extra icing on the cake. And I'd love to hear from you if that's the case. Now, today's show is uh, going to be just a little different in the fact that we're going over two games at once. Uh, we'll be playing a little bit of Silent Hunter 1 and Silent Hunter 2. And I'm going to want to show you some of the manuals and stuff, some of the collateral that was part of that game uh, series. So there's going to be a little bit of um, me pulling things up and trying to get the software to work. So I apologize in advance if we have some pauses and some delays. I'll try to keep talking so there's not too much dead air. But that is always a possibility, so just be aware. Um, and yeah, so Silent Silent Service was one of the earliest simulation games I, I played. There was a number of them back in the 80s, F-15, F-119, uh, and the such. Oh, another thing I should mention is that from here on, I believe for the most part, these games I'm going to be playing are going to be Steam or GOG. Since I'm going in chronological order, you can expect a lot of these early games to be GOG. And as we go further on, we'll get some Steam titles uh, in there. And I'll try to remember to tell you where you can find these. Silent Service 1 and 2, 
can be bought off of Steam and they're configured to work with newer Windows, which is how I'll be playing them today. And they have a lot of the uh, collateral as, you know, PDFs. So we're going to be checking those out together. Um, but yeah, it was really cool playing these simulations back in the day on your old computer because despite their low resolution graphics and everything else, they would pull you in the way no other games could. And you really felt like you were the pilot of a jet plane or sub, a captain of a submarine um, as you dove into these things. And you really get the feeling um, that the developers took this stuff very seriously. Uh, they did, um, uh, they, 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 they put a lot of time and thought into the software uh, and the programming um, and just into the sheer amount of detail um, that's in the manuals and the such is just absolutely nothing short of amazing. So really, really cool. Um, we're going to go over some of that now. So let me give you give you an example here. And this is where uh, hopefully we won't get into too many issues here. I'm going to transition over to my monitor and uh, my desktop here. And as you can see here, I'm using the the GOG client called uh, uh, Galaxy. GOG is a really cool service. Uh, they sell the games DRM free. This is their version of the Steam client, but it's completely optional. You can just download the game once you bought it directly from their website with your login and install it without ever using this client. I really like to use the client. But you can see I've got Silent Service uh, 1 and 2 here as well as uh, Silent Hunter 2, but we're going to be focusing on uh, uh, Silent Service. And uh, before we play that, I want to show you the manuals. Well, we'll focus on one manual really right now, and that is right here. So this is the manual for, for Silent Service 2 by Microprose. Microprose did a lot of these uh, simulations. And uh, they were very, very deep. I like how on the periscope here it says actual screen shown, you know, so that you know that, hey, that, that, that ship really does look that awesome. Um, but as you can kind of see up here, if you're looking at the top here, there's 100, it might be a little bit hard to see through the feed. There's 138 pages of these manuals. These things were extremely uh, detailed and they would provide background, uh, you know, a bit of a story there. And, and this is all drawn into real history here. This is actually giving you an introduction to World War II, uh, which is the setting for uh, the Silent Service uh, series. And um, we're going to kind of just flip through this, but there's, there's, the, you know, the tutorials aren't really in the games. They're in the instruction books. You need to sit down and read, play with the buttons to get a feeling for these games. Cause there's a lot of buttons, um, you know, on these games. Plus more importantly, a lot of mechanics, uh, under, underneath the, the hood running the engine, so to speak. Now, I won't lie. Uh, it's been years and years since I've actually sat down and read these, and as I play these days, you're going to tell that uh, I've uh, become a bit rusty, but I used to be pretty good at this game. There's lots of things to take into consideration. It's going over time and fuel right here, uh, battle tactics, and much, much more. Um, and these are just uh, different options of the game. Let's see if I can get a little bit further on here. It's going over the details, looking out over the bridge targeting computer the clock the the gauges and the dials and there's lots of gauges and dials we'll get into that as we we dive into the game uh, your ship's log and you can play campaigns or single missions uh, in this game you can go out on um, longer patrols uh, I figured exactly what they're called it's not campaigns it might be called campaigns but I think there's something else I'm thinking of there and it's going over all the keyboard uh, shortcuts and, and what they what they mean um, I like this is an important little little paragraph right here. Maximum depth. The test depth of your submarine is the maximum safe operating depth. This is the depth to which your submarine was tested. In reality, many submarines went deeper than that. Sometimes as much as fifty percent deeper. However, of course, the greater uh, the deeper you go, the greater your chance of damage. You have to watch for bulkheads starting to crush in, and and that's uh, that's something we'll talk about. But that's where it gets a little little scary. You you actually uh, uh, will will. You know, looking around, starting to expect water to start springing in uh, at any minute, um, uh, and the such. 
And then uh, that, that first 40, 50 pages was just telling you how to play the game, just the basic controls and what they meant. Uh, then you get into different tactics and strategies, which, you know, the submarine captains would really, really use. And so they did, they, they worked really hard to tie in actual submarine and ship strategies um, with, uh, you know, into the game, including, you know, how would, uh, you know, how would the convoys, you know, move if they felt like they were under attack? Um, you know, what is it, uh, you know, they would start zigzagging rather than just going uh, straight. Um, uh, you know, so that you didn't know exactly where it was going. Uh, different types of strategies that the enemy would use. Not only teaching you things you can use, but, uh, and that submarine commanders would use, but making you aware that this, the game is programmed with real tactics that the Japanese uh, were using back then. Um, and uh, heck, it's even got a course in trigonometry if you want to uh, manually fire your torpedoes. I am a little bit of a wimp. I use the, uh, the computer <laughs> to do that for me. But, uh, you know, the back, back when they were underneath the submarines, a lot of times they were doing that by hand. I imagine they didn't have computers on board. Uh, not in the same way we, we think of computers the, these days. And let's see here. I believe somewhere on here gonna keep going here we got the technical data so we're going into the actual details uh, of the submarine showing you exactly where everything is at um, on it the engine room the cruise quarters the batteries the officer quarters all that is detailed here like I said just great pains they went through uh, to detail this uh, this entire thing it's just absolutely amazing going through each class of submarine and what you can expect as far as performance goes out of each one um, just just absolutely amazing and then going through the Japanese uh, ships and the details about each one of those that you might encounter on your uh, campaigns uh, out there so just tons and tons of stuff it's just it's just amazing the amount of detail that they cram into this book and then also cram into the game so that's pretty cool I'm not gonna save that now here is, I think this is it here, right here. Yeah. So this is what you would get when you bought the game, um, except this would be a piece of cardboard. This would not be a PDF. And this would be uh, this would be a keyboard overlay. And, and you can't really, you might not be able to see it here, but I can see it just barely with the PDF. There's, there's actually the, um, you can see where the cardboard has been perforated for easy punching out. So you could punch this out and put it over your keyboard and then you know you'd have the easy uh, layout of what your buttons do I'm gonna have this open on my second monitor as I play this game um, because I don't remember all the commands off the top of my head but uh, you can just see how many buttons are here and how many different things you can do something really funny here they got the boss hide game mode you, know, you install this game at work your boss is coming around the corner you press alt and B and somehow the, the screen goes black because you're busy doing other stuff so, yeah, lots of different uh, buttons there uh, to run your ship. Um, the speeds, the engine, launching debris for when you're underwater and you want them to think that they blew you up. <laughs> Damage report gauges. We're going to go through all this as we, as we play that game. So, yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome stuff. We're starting with um, Silent Service 1, which just kind of listed all here just like this. So we'll start off with, with that silent, silent Service 1. And I'm going to try to get the capture uh, uh, fixed to where it's just going to pull just the feed from the game here in just a minute. So you can see how that looks. And we'll get started here. So let me get the game started. And then we'll try to set that up to pick up the game. So... And and this one is running, you know, if you remember my 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 episode on Y Barn from a couple of weeks ago, the um oh see, it's kind of capturing the whole desktop. Oh, but hey, we can resize. No, we can't resize that. Okay, we'll, we'll fix this. Um I mentioned before that uh that the um, when I was playing that Y Barn, I mentioned that there was a mode of graphics called CGA, which would often display in four colors, white, cyan, magenta, 
and black. And that's how we'll be running this first silent service today. Limited to only four colors. Sad, but true. Um, we're going to turn that off for a second, and we're going to see if we can add window capture and get that game for you. And boom, there it is. So we'll get that stretched in for you. And that should pop up in just a minute. But this is Silent Service, the submarine simulator. First one here, at the very least, designed by Sid Meier. So I'm definitely a, a guy whose name you see on a lot of these uh, simulation games. You thought he just did Civilization. No, he also did. Oh, hey, we got more colors. Uh, he also did um, Simulations. So... I'm gonna get this game started in just a minute here. <sighs> and it's like they, they don't give you a whole lot of uh, <laughs> torpedo gun practice, convoy actions, and war patrols. Uh, we're gonna try a little convoy action. Torpedo gun practice, I tried that earlier. So hopefully I, I've learned something from that practice. Convoy action is where it gets a little dangerous here. And, um, oh boy, got options here. We'll just try a daytime attack. And this is where you got some options. Uh, a lot of Sid, even back in the day, Sid Meier games were known for giving you different things to uh, to play with. And let's see, press escape to choose reality level. All right, there we go. We're gonna we're gonna make it very unrealistic by making by turning some of these options on and off. The dead torpedoes was a very real fact of life back in the uh, back in those days when firing from the submarines. I mean, they still may be today, but. Uh, in the game, I think if you got that turned on, roughly 10, 25% of your torpedoes that hit will still not explode, which kind of sucks. Um, yeah. We don't want to have to type in any of that, so I think that's all good. Press return to continue. So you start off, um, here you are. You're the captain. <laughs> it looks like you're a one-man submarine here. There's no one else in the room. But, you know, with limited graphics, they had to do uh, what they could there. And I'm going to take a look here at my keyboard commands. And it looks like the map is F1 here. So there's the map. And we're getting some audio there. I'm going to turn down the audio. There's not a, there's no background music, as you can hear. You know, the sound effects uh, on these old DOS games can be a little irritating. Sounds, sounds like a motor or something. So the red, one of those dots is me. I want to say the red dot's me. I think that convoy is the few dots there to the south. So, and there was a way to zoom in and out on the map. At least there isn't the, the future ones. <laughs> Not really sure about this one. Let's see, our heading is 270. So we're going to turn that uh, heading down to 180 because that's where it looks like they're all at. Below me is 180. Zero, heading of zero would mean straight north, 180 is straight south, 270 is west, and 90 is east, if I remember correctly. We should probably go to the bridge or something, see if I can see these guys yet. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah, look, we got little ships there and everything. I mean, you can barely tell these guys, because, I mean, they're, they're just little gray dots on the screen. Boy, I'll tell you what, this, this is this is really old school. Whew. I'm gonna fire a torpedo, letter T. All right, let's see if we can... There we go, torpedo fired. I uh, wonder if I can sh show, slow this thing down. Slow down to one-third speed. Okay, this this is rough. <laughs> and I, I didn't play this, this one back in the day, thankfully. I wanna say I saw my dad play this one on the, uh, uh, or something very, very similar to it on the Commodore 64. And then you can see my torpedoes in the water right there. The little white dot with gray ripply lines behind it. Ooh, distant explosions. Well, hell, that, that sounds good. He's still not sinking yet, though. So we're gonna shoot another one there. Go get him. Go get him, missiles. Distant explosions. Oh, there he goes. That one sunk. Now, thing is, I mean, I, I. You know, you, you would need to, generally speaking, uh, I'm used to starting a little bit further out, but I think you would normally, you know, you'd want to normally identify these ships. Um, 
and um, you know just uh, make see if there's any uh, enemy what's the word I'm looking for destroyers because <laughs> destroyers will fire back at you and do damage to you I don't seem to be taking damage at the moment oh here we go here's the here's the bridge I thought this would be damage because we're hit F2 hmm. oh well yeah, there's a look. Uh, let's see some of those ships out there. Oh, destroyers firing. Uh oh, that would mean we want to dive. Yeah, we want to dive. And how do I go back to the map? F1. My death is 22. Uh oh. Oh, well, I just want to get to. We have run aground. Really? Oh, well. Or another. We ran to another ship. Well, that, that's not really good. Bridge underwater. Uh, well, because it thinks I'm trying to go to the bridge. I don't know why it doesn't... Uh, keyboard says F2 for damage, and that's not really working. All right, here we go. Damage report none. Usually hitting the ground will cause some sort of hull damage there. So I guess I'm thankful that I'm not uh, taking on... Whoops, wrong button. I'm grateful that I'm not taking on uh, you know, damage at the moment. I wonder if I can, uh, hopefully I haven't dived too, oh, I haven't dived too bad. Let's see, surface is S, D is for dive, and what about, huh? all right, let's just, no, I can't just, all right, what about using my periscope now, F5 for periscope. Can I do F5 for periscope? One of these buttons is periscope. One of these buttons is periscope. No, oh, look at there. Got a lizard ship's uh, already sunk there. Great. Now, if one of these guys could show me where my periscope is at. Use scope. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Now, I remember that... Oh, uh, let's see. Select the periscope. Oh, I'm looking at the Commodore commands. Let's see. The IBM for periscope is F3. Scope inoperable. Ooh. Well, that's not good. Let's put the periscope. Operable? Hmm. Periscope up. There we go. Scope is underwater. See, I probably need to get a little bit closer to the water. I, I think periscopes can only work around 40 feet. But um, I'm trying to not surface all the way. And okay, I just want to stop at zero. Well, I'm just not having a really great day. I'm trying to see if there's a there's an option here. I'm looking at the instructions. Uh, so when I dive, I need to stop at a certain um, Oh, I see. I'm at 47. That's the ground. <laughs> but I need to surface without going all the way to the surface. I need to stop at I uh, see it's it keeps, uh, uh, I just need a steady plane. What's the whole, looking for the button that says, hey, stop going down. The only thing that's stopping me from going down right now is, oh, up 25 is plus sign. Let's try that. Gun deflection 25 yards. Oh, that's gun control. Yeah, I just want to, um... uh-oh, depth charge is dropped. This cannon, well. <laughs> Well, <laughs> probably going to die because Phil can't figure out the, the, uh, oh, I might be taking on water at this point because surf, the, the surface command is not having any impact. Oh, yeah, there we go. Damage report, dive plane damage, bow torpedo damage. Whew. Well, let it not be said that the first island service game isn't really, really tough. And um, or at least a little bit hard to figure out. You definitely want to put some time into this, and maybe find a better guide than the one that comes with the book. Because dang it, I cannot figure out how to level the diving plane so that I just stay at a certain. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and close that guy for the moment. Ah, <laughs> uh, but that was that was the first island service. I didn't really play that one. I played the second one. So we're gonna give that one a shot next. It's the one with the fancy keyboard overlay, after all, and the graphics so good that they put it right on the front of the box. So, heck. And we'll get that guy booted up. 
Now, let's see if I can get over here. And yeah, you can already tell the graphics are infinitely advanced and better. Silent Service 2. Wrath of Khan. Oops, we'll move the keyboard overlay box out of the way. I'll be using that quite a bit. Actually, I should probably look to see uh, if it doesn't have that command for um, leveling out. Zoom, unzoom, fire torpedoes, fire deck guns. Ah, yeah. So a lot of these games, as copyright protection, would have you identify um, aircraft carriers. I think GOG has made it to where you can just type in anything and it'll make it correct there. And we'll do a single battle as soon as I figure out how to dive here. Oh, well, they have a command for periscope depth, so that should that should suit our purposes. Uh, I'm not immediately seeing a, on the um, overlay, not immediately seeing a dive command. I might want to open up the original uh, manual for this game, just, just in case I need some weird command that's not on the overlay. So give me one second to pull that up as well. I have tons of windows open up on my computer now. Super awesome. That's the way these old school games work. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'll do a single battle. A little random engagement, sure. Please enter your name. There we go. We'll draw introductory, because dang it, we're still figuring this thing out. Now you could you, you could play anywhere in the World War II period, which ran for roughly three three or four years there. So, and that would impact what kind of um, weapons and ships you have access to. Kind of like a ship that has a lot of test depth to it. That's always awesome. Select torpedo type. Hmm, electric torpedoes. That sounds awesome. We want flawless. Because dang it, we're wimps. Congratulations, you're in charge of the USS Bumper. Huh. Well, that's an awesome name. Let's enter past that. We have a radar contact with a small target at 800 hours, bearing 313. Today sunrise is 737, today sunset 1759, so we'll be playing in the morning. That's good. Visibility is good. Water depth's about 1,000. See, these are good details, see, because the last game I hit the ground as soon as I got below 45, so. Uh, our broadside is visible at 6,600 feet. If in dawn, we're visible at 2,230. So, one of the things when you're when you're in the water and you're a submarine and you're shooting at other ships, um, you want to hit ships on the side. If they're coming right at you, they're best, I guess they're, it's harder to hit them because they have less profile. Uh, not, not to mention they're coming right at you, but, um, I want to say they also may have some more plating up there. I'm not really sure, but I do know that a torpedo that hits them dead on doesn't do as much damage as a torpedo that hits them in the side. And apparently, another issue to, uh, to think about is the fact that you're much more visible broadside than if you're heading, at, you know, end on into somebody. Our periscope is visible at 1248. Huh, so once you get 1248 feet, they might be able to spot your periscope uh, broading out there. Our broadside is visible to sonar at 877. Ooh. Or in, uh, end on is visible to sonar at 292. So, all important numbers to, to remember. A big part of these games was planning out your approach, knowing, and it's the same thing when you're playing uh, the F 119 Stealth Bomber, which will be one of my future shows. I love that game. Oh my gosh. Because you would plan your approaches to radar installations and everything. Some radars will hit you better from the side, some radars will hit you better from the front. So, you have to plan your approach appropriately so we have the uh the tactical view here um and this one looks a little bit more detailed in the fact that it has um uh, a little bit more uh, pixels there to work with uh, i'm not sure if it has that much let's see we got two whoa we got two ships that don't look like they're that far away they look like they're coming right at us no less i'm gonna reverse full here so i think this little white dot that's my submarine these are the two ships and um that we're, we're just heading on a collision course for each other now i'm under the water i would hope let's see target range bearing loaded boat depth is 25 feet but um i, I really expect to be heading right towards each other here 
let's see here. I'm just going to back up. I'm kind of doing the car backup thing here. I got my rudder to the right. I'm backing up, and I'm going to get them to where uh, I'm facing them head on while they're going perpendicular to me. And let's see. All right. Rudder centered. A little bit of a delay on the keyboard input there. I think it only gets like one frame a second or something. All right, let's see if we can look at the uh, periscope here, F3. And so, as you can tell already from the periscope, much, 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 much better graphics. And we can uh, turn the, um, the periscope left and right somehow. Set course, set view to course. View left is the, it's the carrot key. So, see if we can get this guy in our periscope here. We're slowly moving it around incrementally. There we go. Target range. And there is a way to lock him into uh, into target view here. But let's see, his range is only 1,400. Holy cow, that's, that's pretty darn close to start off something with. I think we better fire some torpedoes or something along those lines. Oops, gotta keep them my crosshairs there. And that might not do it. All right, here we go. I'm having a hard time just keeping them there. Fire, fire. I'll fire a couple of torpedoes. Look, we get a little cutscene of him firing the torpedo. There we go. We got another one coming. And I don't know if we'll get much in the way of uh see if we get much in the way of um wow that is really close i think the torpedoes missed at least i think they missed zoom out sure does look like it to me those ships are just really close that's a hell of a way to start out a an encounter is to have your enemy right on top of you like that that's that's less than ideal uh i i get the feeling here uh, uh this is this isn't gonna work too well i'm gonna i'm gonna change a strategy here i'm gonna go forward and just see where it leads me here uh, okay so the the enemy ships there are well they're kind of turning parallel turning a little bit to the torpedo right now fuel yeah completely missed we're just too close it's a horrible way to to have to try to fight these guys Surprised they didn't detect me. Or maybe they have detected me and they just can't fight back. Only the destroyers and the such have death charges. I could pop up on the surface and start firing with my gun. And uh, that can be dangerous at these close quarters. That ship is right there and he doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. Uh, let's see. My speed is 10. Well, what the hell. Let's pop up on the surface here. Remember how to pop up on the surface. Bridge lookout, accelerate time. And you can accelerate and slow down time, which is very useful when you're chasing somebody long distance. I'm gonna change my heading just a little bit to the south here. I don't wanna completely lose these guys here. I don't think I can fire a torpedo if, I, if they're directly perpendicular to me, however. I actually periscope death. Let's see if we can find the um, rises number eight. Periscope death. No, no, I want to rise. Planes up. There we go. So when you're underwater, you're running on battery power, you only go about half your speed. Once we hit the surface here, we'll pick up a lot of speed, which will hopefully allow us to um, get ahead of them a little bit. As you can see, our speed is catching up there. But now we take a, a risk of them shooting at us, presuming that they have some sort of deck guns, which they probably do. We can get out here and we can see them now. We can take a look at the bridge here. Oops. 
I see the ship right there. Enemy ship staring at us. Target range 1900 and increasing. So normally, hopefully, you know, with any luck, if you're playing the campaign, you catch these guys a little bit further out. And, um, um, and plan your approach a little better than heading straight on towards them. We can use the binoculars here on the bridge. And these are the tactical binoculars. And this will allow us to get a better look at our foes here. Who don't seem to be doing a whole lot. Let's fire our deck guns at them. Hell, why, why the hell not? Uh, let's see if we can figure out how to fire a gun. Uh, let's see. Set course. Recenter fire deck gun space bar. Oh, that's pretty handy. Target. And he's 2,800 feet, though. Um, and climbing. That might be... It looked like it actually fire, uh, landed behind him, though. So you can you can you can bring the gun uh, angle down a little bit by hitting the plus and minus key. You can raise and lower the gun. So if it's the bullets are landing behind them, you might want to bring it down a couple of notches to the bullets are landing, you know, in front of them. Uh, those are landing in front, so let's try the number in the middle. Oh, and our missile's been reloaded. Torpedo's been reloaded. Oh, really? At least we're reaching them that far. Alright, let's go back to our map here. Charts. Yeah, we're, uh... Seems like we're pretty far ahead of them. Let's see if I can go underneath water. Periscope depth. And uh, periscope depth is number eight. And we're going to take a hard right. And I'm going to see if I can hit that ship in the distance. There's one ship that's hitting directly towards me. And then there's that other one that's just trying to ignore me back in the distance. So I'm going to see if I can... Uh, just get the one in the distance, and I don't know if that one coming towards me is a destroyer or not. Might be able to hurt me. We'll find out. What I'm going to do here is I'll go all reverse here in just a moment once I get a good angle. I think I'm at a good angle there. Runner centered. All ahead stop, and full reverse. That'll give me some time. Uh, let's see if we can look at our periscope now. And what I'm looking for is the guy who was a little bit, he was like at 220-ish, I think. Maybe that was him. And this guy right here, maybe. Let's see if we can get a torpedo up his rear end here. <laughs> they almost always fire torpedo, torpedoes in pairs. It takes so long to get there anyways. Let's see if we can take a look at our chart again. We see our torpedoes going away. We see the other guy coming straight for us. Let's see if we can get one of these guys down before uh, before we get destroyed by the guy coming straight for us. Got 20 seconds to impact. So that's the computer showing you there how long until the missiles will hit, assuming that they, or the torpedoes I should say, assuming that they hit. Uh-oh, depth charges. Woo! Yeah, that guy is a destroyer. That is hilarious. Not for us, though. That's gonna hurt. You know, I wonder if there's a way to turn off those animations. That could get irritating after a little while. I get it. He's, he's depth charging the hell out of me. Got it. Critical damage. Oh, that, that's probably not good. Oh, we're sinking. That's probably even worse. You know what? I, I just was kind of hoping that I at least kill somebody for all my efforts. So we're kind of uh, we're kind of sinking here. Uh, it looks like, of course, our torpedoes are gonna miss because boy, we suck. Hmm. Let's give them some debris. So we launched our debris after killing our engines uh, because if we have engines running, they're gonna think we're still alive. I need to do something about that sinking feeling, though. And for the life of me, I'm forgetting how to go back up. Uh, blow all tanks rise. 
Okay, I think I've stopped the sinking. So this is the part where you just kind of hope and pray, right? I threw the debris out there, I took some damage, and we can take a look at our damage report here. Uh, 35%. I'm pretty sure if you hit 100%, it's all over. Uh, engine number four is damaged. A periscope is wrecked. Our radar is wrecked. Ooh. Um, hmm. Deck gun is wrecked. Flooding in the aft torpedo room. Deck gun is wrecked. Die planes damaged. Wrecked surface. Flooding repairing half. Ooh. Yeah. There's a lot of problems there. Wow. So we just, this is where you just kind of hope that, uh, that, um, uh, these guys go away. Now, I forget, uh, yeah, it looks like he's going away. He's, he's bought the debris. I'm 300 feet underwater. I'm, I'm dead silent, running silent, running deep. This is, if you see those movies, that's where they got the red lights on. Everyone's being really quiet. No one's allowed to sneeze because the way ships would detect you is by sonar. So you, you want to make sure you don't make any noise. And at this point, you just hope you got they, they get away because I was a little bit outclassed there. When I played this game back in the day, I knew more about it. Uh, or I would identify the ships first. I would plan my approach. You know, you see the destroyers. Usually, uh, you know, this is a very, very small convoy. Uh, but in a larger convoy, they might be one or two destroyers. And you would try to take those out first because if you get rid of the destroyers, um, then the tankers were just sitting sitting ducks it was all free tonnage um, and occasionally you didn't get them all destroyed they would come after you <laughs> so you try to destroy as many tankers as you can and then try to get away uh, go underneath the water and go deep uh, it, it doesn't seem like I really have a chance here of, of going back after these guys with so much damage I don't think it's going to get repaired um, before they get too too far away and attacking them with all these problems would not be wise so I would say this is uh, this is kind of a draw. It's a shame that I didn't destroy at least one of them, though. That would be the goal, right? I uh, normally I would have got uh, with any luck I would have gotten that one ship with a couple of torpedoes that I did fire, and then the destroyer would have given up looking for me, and uh, I would still get the tonnage uh, credit to my uh, to my name. And when you play the long campaigns, as you rack up the tonnage and you report back to base, you can get promotions based on the tonnage that you sank so it was really cool to see how far you could get um uh, before you you know got destroyed and if you got destroyed um yeah your game was pretty much over so hmm oh hey there is a save game all is a save game uh-huh save game number well there you go of course now um do you want to end this game? Yes. So you're going to hit... Uh, you can start another one. I wonder if they're always that brutal. Start you right off with somebody there. You are now in command of the Glabian. You'll engage the guy. Oh, this is just training. So... These guys won't even move or anything. This is just shooting some sitting ducks, which I've done this before, uh, before I did this show. Normally, oops, I put the periscope down. Did I put the periscope? Oh, I need to put the periscope up. Can we put the periscope up with a P? Periscope down. Oh, it's because I'm on the surface of the water. But normally, I mean, if they're sitting ducks, this is super, super easy here. So we got a guy right there. Wow, he's pretty far away, too. See? You could plan this one out if you wanted to. We'll get a little bit closer here. Our bearing is 355. And... I'm not really sure what our bearing, or what our ship's heading is. So, we'll take a look at the map. All right, our heading is due north, so that's a good place to be. So heading is what direction you're actually moving, what direction you're heading. Bearing is which direction you're looking at the uh, the periscope or through the binoculars. So we'll get a little bit closer okay. here. I 
I wonder if you could hit him this far out. That's a good question. Do, 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 do. Sitting ducks, sitting ducks. Nothing like some sitting ducks. Give him a couple of torpedoes there. Now, so this 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 game was a lot of fun. There were other games that came out after it, uh, notably the Silent Hunter series. I'm not exactly sure what the the lineage is as far as did any of those programmers go on to Silent Hunter. I don't think it's the same company. It's a different name. But um, Silent Service kind of went the way of the di as a as a franchise went the way of the dinosaur. Nowadays, if you want to play a good submarine simulator, you play one of the Silent uh, the Hunter games. And I did fire one of those up on uh, Steam the other day, and it looked really, really good. Uh, just phenomenal how real the, the water and everything looks. Um, I won't propose to, I, I, to say or pretend to know how good or bad those games are. You can check out the reviews and, and the such. But, for yeah, for immersion, and this was the this was the bomb back in the day. Oh, hey, we can zoom in on the ships, too. It is, uh, oh, yeah, look at that. That's a ship up close. Yeah. Yeah, he's just sitting there. Torpedo ran out of fuel. Yeah, we're too far away. I forget what the range are on the torpedoes. That's probably in the 500-page manual. We'll definitely get a little bit closer here. Yeah, this seems to be a little bit of a drag here, so we can accelerate our time by hitting F9, if I'm not mistaken. You see those numbers going a lot faster now. One of the nice things about uh, these this this line of simulation games from this company. Okay, we're probably better in torpedo range now. I've actually, I think I still got it on two times speed. Uh, that's fine. A couple more torpedoes. Yeah, those cutscenes, little irritating. Oh, here we go. Animation on and off. Maybe that's what it is. It's kind of cool the first couple of times, but animation's off. All right. If we take a look at our charts, we can see the torpedoes. Yeah, that time's going really quick. So they're about a minute and a half away here. And closing. Now we kind of slowed it back up again. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's about 30 seconds there. Ah, torpedo ran out of fuel again. Are you serious? Oh, we'll just pick a different target. There's there's one really close over there. Okay. <laughs> just move the periscope to the left here. Target range 4100. What was the last guy? 3800. This guy here is... 4,300. Huh. 43. 4,100. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll get a little closer. Speed her up. Oh, I think I fired my my uh, deck gun at it. Oh, the deck gun got it good. I'll fire some more deck guns. Oh, he's got a lot of smoky smoke. See, when they're not moving, when they're sitting targets, boy. Get them real good. One of the things about the, when you're doing these long campaigns and you're away from the base is because, you know, you're worried about your ammunition, you're worried about the damage you take, you're worried about your fuel, you're worried about getting back. You're managing all that stuff, uh, you know, in real time. Uh, and it's, like I said, it'll keep you on the edge of your seat. But I think I'll call it there. But that is that is Silent Hunt, uh, Silent Service. You know, I almost forgot to mention the stats. Let's pull up the stats real quick, shall we? Let us do that. 
But yeah, I played that game for I played these games for hours in the still of the night. Maybe it had some music on the background, but usually the you know the submarine games were better just to play in the quiet, and you're underneath the water trying to hide from the enemy ships and stuff. Uh, it was it was just it was just insane. You didn't know if you were gonna sink or not. You're <laughs> you start looking up like this, and when you get underneath, uh, you could actually hear the creaking sounds. Uh, you know, as the bulkheads are kind of um, you know uh, buckling underneath the pressure, uh, and you know so you but you want to go as far as you can to 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 get as far away as you 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 you're, uh, you can get away from the the enemy sonar. So the original Silent Hunter that we played originally came out in 1985, and then Silent Surface 2 that we just uh, gave a little bit of a run there was in 1990, um, by MPS developed by MPS Labs, and they're the same people who made the uh, Stealth uh, Stealth Bomber series that we'll be doing or the Stealth Bomber game. The F, I think it's the F119 or F117, I should say F117A, that we'll be doing later on down the road. So, and that one's a lot of fun. But, I mean, you didn't get too many frames per second. Even if you go back and you play this, you're going to find out it's not a silky, smooth frame rate. There's definitely a delay when I put in the commands and the such. And DOSBox is set to 3,000 cycles. I think that's just um, a limitation of the times. You just didn't get uh, too much um, out of those. I remember when I was playing F17 uh, through GOG on Windows 7. If uh, I think there was a way to kind of speed up, make it feel more smooth, but then it went so quick... Um, that I didn't have enough time to to react and and uh, keep it with what's going on. Uh, if you like what you see here, again, feel free to leave comments and the such down below. Uh, put a little thumbs up and let me know what you think about it. Would love to hear from you. If you like it, if you like to see full less plays, let me know and uh, share it with your friends. Hopefully, you got a little kick out of that. They get better from here on out. I know a few are like, man, Phil, that game that game doesn't really look that much fun. It's super slow. It's super old. I know. Just taking you on the trip with me. That's how they were back in the day. It, you know, it's just a nostalgia trip. I wouldn't recommend Silent Service nowadays to anybody. Uh, I would recommend Silent Hunter to play one of the games that have actually been released this decade with the better graphics. So at least give it a shot and see if you don't like, uh, like that. But the, the simulation games well, yeah, are something else. Uh, so you might want to check those out. The next game on my list is Pirates. We'll be going through the various iterations of Pirates. And I originally played the um, uh, the uh, Sid Meier's Pirates that came out way back in the 80s, 80s, 1987 actually. But we'll also touch base on the uh, SVGA remake as well as Pirates Gold that came out, I want to say around 2000 or so on just about everything. So look forward to talking to you about that one. And in the meantime, you have a great night. Have a good evening and take care. Have fun. <laughs>